My people, thank you so much for being here. Your favorite You and I talk show with Louise Wachu. This week, my people, a multi award winning actor, amazing talent. Stay tuned. <laughs> My people, welcome back this week. Paul McGillian. Yes. I'm such a fan. Thank you. I will ask for your autograph. Okay. <laughs> You're so talented, you're so amazing. <laughs> you have been in over 100 projects. You have over 100 credits to your name, film and television. Yes. How did that start? I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> you're aging very well. Thank you so much. Very well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so how did, you, how did you start? I hear you come from a big family. Yes, I'm one of seven children. Uh, uh, six boys, one girl. I was born in Scotland, wow. you know, so um, when I came out, uh, I had a lot of hair and my mom looked at me and she says, oh my God, look at him. He looks like a wee beetle, we'll call him Paul. <laughs> and that's how it started. <laughs> she said, you've been acting since the day you came out. Wow, yeah. from the day you were a baby. Not really, but uh, you know, I went to school, <laughs> I went to university and I did an education degree and I did a minor in theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started acting in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing it ever since. So your parents were already prepared for it? No, I don't know. Maybe I was a little bit of a shit disturber, but can we say that? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, but I, I think possibly, yeah. I mean, there six boys, you know, I was number six out of seven by the time. You know, a lot of big characters, big Scottish, Irish family. Yeah. My younger brother's the only one born in Canada. So, so yeah, a lot of characters in the family that probably added to it. Mm -hmm. So where did you get this? Canadian American accent. Where, 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 well, I was where born there, but I was brought up in Canada. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. We, we immigrated when I was quite young, when mm -hmm. I was like two and a half. And then uh, when I was 12, uh, we moved back to Scotland with the four youngest kids for a couple of years. So I did like grade seven and eight there, and nine, and then moved back again to Canada. So my parents didn't know what they wanted to do. <laughs> so, I, and then they bought a farm out of the blue, you know, in Niagara on the Lake, and then. Uh, it kind of just went from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you do a Scottish accent uh, ever? Or <laughs> absolutely, love. Uh -huh. There, there, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I played. I played a character on television for five years on Stargate Atlantis. Mm -hmm. I played a Scottish character on that show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I can see the 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 other Scottish actor that's so famous. Uh, I, I'm forgetting his name. The Sean James Connery? Bond guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you saying I look like him? Because he's like uh, 90. No, 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 no. You look like a better, younger version of him. Hey, he, was, he, he had his day, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. I'd love to have his career. Yeah, definitely. But you look as great as him when he was younger. You know what I mean? Thank you. That was Very good. Nice. Good comeback. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. So right now, you're in a, a great film that's uh, been a Toronto Film Festival, Vancouver yes. International Film Festival, and it's called Hello, Destroyer. That's right. A little bit dark. Tell us a little bit about very, it. Very dark, very dark content. It's, uh, essentially, it's a film about um, the institutional violence in sports, and uh, the backdrop for this film is hockey, which is our national sport. And I think it's a really important film because it shows it shows the pressures that are put on young men, especially in our country, um, to get out there and perform, you know, at all costs. In the film, uh, Jared Abrahamson, who plays uh, my son, I play his father, Ron Burr, and he's Tyson Burr. He's a lead in the film, and he won the Rising Star at the Toronto International Film Festival, and he's just a, a terrific young actor. Uh, we second time we worked together. We did a Hallmark movie together years ago, and uh, very, very different. Obviously, not nearly as dark, but um, Kevin Funk wrote and directed the film. And uh, it basically starts out with him um, ha causing an incident in a hockey game, um, kind of by accident, where he injures a star player in another team. And it's sort of about his slow, systematic demise because of this one, one incident in, the, in this game. And it's, uh, it's really interesting to watch what happens. He just gets basically abandoned. And, and we, you know, it happens a lot. In, in hockey and a lot of different sports. I think Kevin, our director, says that, you know, that's the backdrop, but if it was in the States, it could be basketball, it could be football, it could be, it could be the military. It's just how violence is institutionalized in, in sport, and especially in Canada right now. And I think it's a really important film. 
we did really, uh, you know, had great reviews, the Global Mail and National Post and the Hockey News, you know, uh, Ken Campbell at the Hockey News made, wrote a fantastic article about it, which is really great uh, coming from, because it doesn't really glorify the sport. And I play his father, mm -hmm. and it's a character that is really, really repressed. There's not a lot of communication going on there. And, and Tyson, the young, young fellow, he, he's very similar to that. And I think my father, in, it was like that too. So it's sort of brought down through the generations. But it, it's a really important film. We've had a great response here in Vancouver. It won, uh, Kevin won the Emerging Director Award for it. And it won runner-up Best Film, Best Canadian Film. So, you know, it's my third film with Kevin Funk. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a pleasure to work with him. And how do you feel going on, on a dark project? We'll also talk about how you just finished a, a comedy. Right. Yeah. So how do you feel going from a comedy to, I guess that's being a, a great actor. That's why you're a great actor. Well, well thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for that. Uh, you know, I, I, you know I, I really enjoy working in different, you know, I, I love the comedies. I love, I love the dramatic films. And uh, it's just a pleasure to be able to do all those. I, I'm, a, I'm a character actor and I get a chance to play that. And I think as an actor, that's, people sometimes see you in one vein, but then, you know, you, there's quite often you, you can do other things and people sometimes forget that. So I think you constantly have to reinvent yourself as an actor as well. That's why I really enjoy doing the independent films. It gives you a chance to play these dark roles that sometimes you're not cast in traditionally. Um, I, I think it's great. I mean, shooting a film like that, you know, people think you're something so dark, but at the same time, it's a lot of fun doing it too. You know, you're dark when you're on camera. But for me anyway, I'm not a method actor, you know. I think that you can have a lot of fun at the same time doing it. And it was a great group of people. And, you know, the subject matter can be very dark, but the whole experience doesn't need to be dark. And mm. it wasn't. Mm-hmm. All right, my people. Okay, so we'll just take a short break and we'll come back and keep talking about it. You and I talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uachu.com to be a guest on the show. All right, my people, we're back still talking to the multi-talented Paul McGillian. So... Are you taking away violence from men? Like, I thought that men, being a man is about, you know, being rough, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with men being, you know? Hey, uh, there's, there's nothing against the bravado, so to speak, you know, and I think it's, uh, you know, uh, testosterone's not a bad thing, but it's just, uh, I, I think when it's pushed to a level where, um, there's no cutoff point, I think it can become, become a problem. So, yeah, definitely not. I, I, you know, I, I think when you, know, when you see the film, uh, you'll see where it goes in that direction, you know? It certainly doesn't glorify, um, it, it doesn't glorify violence, but it, it also, you know, it, in Canada, hockey is our, is our national sport, you know? And, and, and it just started this week again, and people love it. But I think sometimes you watch the Olympics, there's no fighting in the Olympics, you know? It's not necessary. I think it can be eliminated personally uh -huh. and still have a great game. Oh. You know? Hey, and I play a lot of sports in my, my day and I really, I, I really enjoy the contact sports, but at the same time, it doesn't have to go to that level, I don't think. Mm -hmm. People in Canada are so passionate about hockey. So do you think, for example, what happened in Vancouver when Vancouver lost and then there was some rioting in, in yeah. the city, that type of violence, would it be related to the type of violence that's kind of pushed on men in, in sports? And so you have to win. You have to go out there and fight. And if you don't win, argh, you get even. You know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think that's something outside outside of sports. And I think that that's you know, that's been going on for ages, especially with the hooliganism in in Europe with the, you know football and and I think these things happen. And lots of times they're alcohol induced. You know, <laughs> and uh, you know I, I think these things happen. I mean, unfortunately, it's it's part of the sports. I think it's getting less, and I think that was an unfortunate circumstances because. I think the riots are maybe, you know, one or two percent of the people start them and then the other people are there to enjoy the sport and they enjoy, you know, the sport from many different levels with families and, and have a great time. I was around when that happened and, you know, I, I don't think it's, it, it paints a nice brush of our city. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so another mm. uh, great project that you have been involved in that is so popular is 24. Yes. The show. Yes. How's that? How is that, uh, being on such a popular show? Yeah, that, that was, it was great to work on that. You know, I got, to, I got killed by Kiefer Sutherland, which I think a lot of people have, <laughs> you know? 
Um, John Kassar uh, was you know, a fantastic director, and I worked with him a couple times now, so it was really neat to be on a show right in the height of its you know, popularity, and it's doing good. And, and to, to be one of the people that got you know, another notch on his belt and getting killed, it was, it was kind of a cool opportunity, especially working on a show like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think we'll show people uh, a small clip of uh, some of your work. We sure. can't show everything, but just a short clip to give people an idea okay. of how amazing you have been. Well. <laughs> Let's Thank you. <laughs> All right. That was the control room. We just scrammed the fuel rods. So it's contained? Think of it like a boiling pot of water. You turn off the stove, how long before you can stick your hand in it? The temperature inside is 3,500 degrees. The pressure from the heat is 1,200 PSI and rising. The power outage means we can't open the valves to release it. We're talking about the very real possibility of a full meltdown. I'm calling in. All right, well, that's in motion. There's one last thing we can do on our end. Flood the reactor. Put them on the table, face down. We need them completely immobilized. I'm ready to extract the spinal fluid. Hold his head still. All right. The virus load is even higher than we hoped for. 10 plus in spinal fluid alone. Not enough to reconstitute the pathogen, of course. We'll still need his organs for that. And what happens if he dies before we extract the pathogen? Well, obviously it's optimal to keep the host alive, but the pathogen could survive up to two hours after death, sometimes even longer. Make sure you put that in your report. I have, and I've already uploaded it to your computer. Get him ready to move. Get the stretcher. My people, you see him. Oh, so good. <laughs> how, how um, what is your favorite kind of project to work on? Like when you're selecting because you get auditions, you get offers, mm -hmm. how do you pick a project that you're going to work on? Well, it's, it's all, you know, always nice to get great writing. You know, when you have a great part that you can really sink your teeth into, you know, I, I think it's always fun, for, especially for, for an actor, you know, and, and a chance to kind of work outside of the box a little bit is, is always a pleasure. You know, as a, an opportunity to shoot in India this year for uh, two months and do a film there. And it was a dance movie, and I don't dance, and <laughs> nor did I so much. But when you get chances like that as an actor to do something different like that, you take you jump at them. I think for a cultural experience as well, you know. So you had to travel to India for two months. I was in Mumbai, yeah, for two months. Mm -hmm. I shot a movie. Same uh, director, uh, Dwayne Adler, a fantastic guy, and he created the Step Up franchise and Save the Last Dance. He did that as well. So uh, the story about a, an American family that goes to India for uh, my work colleague's wedding and I have two daughters, one's a hip hop dancer and, and the other one's a younger daughter like 10 and we go over there and she falls in love with the Bollywood wedding entertainer at this wedding we're going to and you know romance and dance ensue and there's family drama and you know it, it, was, uh, it was a great opportunity. My wife had a chance to come over for a week and, and just, uh, it was just an amazing place, a great place to shoot and I think it, that it comes out in the new year. This is a uh, heartbeat, right? That's right. Are you dancing? No. Okay. <laughs> Daddy, don't dance. <laughs> I think there's one little pop in there, maybe me doing something. But I mean, the the, the woman, uh, uh, Tassandra Chavez, who was uh, uh, the she won the Emmy for Dance with the Stars choreographer. She came over with a, a team of dancers from the U.S. and then the the world champion hip hop dancers from from Asia came over and they're in the movie as well. So the dance was amazing. These people were just so talented. So I was just like, wow, thank God I'm not in that part of the movie. So, you know, it was really, for, for me, it was just a, a fun thing to watch this amazing dancing and the beauty. We shot in temples from, you know, 600 BC and, and just seeing the culture was just amazing, you know. Oh, wow. Okay, my people, stay tuned. We'll be back. We'll just take a short break. <laughs> You and I talk show with Luis Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uwacho.com to be a guest on the show. All right, my people, we're back still talking to the very talented Paul McGillian. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I love that, my people. <laughs> <laughs> so you have an upcoming role in a feature film called Midnight Sun where um, you play the entrepreneur, Blake Jones, uh, alongside the 
younger version of uh, Schwarzenegger. Yeah, well, his son, Patrick, <laughs> yeah. Patrick Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah it, it yeah. says Patrick Schwarzenegger and Bella Thorne, mm -hmm. the two leads of the film. You know, uh, it's a it's a wonderful script, and uh, I play his boss in the film and have this massive yacht. So. Uh, it, it's a it's a great script and, it, and he's a really nice young kid you know um, he's not quite as built as Arnold but uh, you know <laughs> he looks kind of like a young Harry Connick Jr. That's uh -huh. what I thought when I met him. Yeah, a really great great kid, wide open for taking everything in, and uh, it was a pleasure to work on that. Mm -hmm. And then um, the directors that you work with, do you have any favorites? And do you have some people when it's them directing, you're like, yeah, I'll jump on that project. Or other people where you look at who else is in the film and you're like, I'm not going to be part of that. Yeah, <laughs> that can happen. Uh, you, you know, if you have the opportunity to be a little bit picky sometimes, I think, you know, there's other people you'd love to work with. And when you see uh, an amazing cast and a fantastic director, you, you jump at the opportunity. Uh, Kevin Funk, who, for example, with Hello Destroyer, that's our third film together. We did uh, Fine Young Man and then Yellowhead and then now Hello Destroyer. And I always love working with him. I, I think he's a fantastic writer. He's a great director. And he works in collaboration with uh, Ben Loeb, who's the director of photography. And they're a team that are they're going to do lots and lots of great projects for years. So I'm happy to, to come on board with those guys anytime. You mm -hmm. know. Um, you know, I, I think when you see a director's name, you're, you oftentimes you love to work with them. I, I, I auditioned for Star Trek with J.J. Abrams, and and uh, you know I, I was up for Scotty. I didn't I didn't get the role, you know, but uh, I went to Simon Pegg, who's fantastic. And um, I was driving back from Los Angeles, and uh, I got a phone call from my manager at the time, and just saying, listen, um, their office, J.J. Abrams' office, called and want to offer you a part on the film. I said, what is it? And he says, well, they won't tell you until you say yes. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Yeah, you know. So I think you know, no matter how small a, a part is like that, I think when you're working with a, a fantastic director, and when I got a chance to meet him, uh, he was just a great guy. You know, so down to earth and and just commanded the set, but just was just kind and open for everyone. And I think that was uh, it. Just tells you, you know, somebody that has done so much and and is so influential in our business right now. You don't have to be a tyrant to run a set. He was just a fantastic guy to work with. So mm -hmm. I think, yeah, if you get an opportunity to work with people like that, I think it's, it's, always, it's always a pleasure, no matter how small the role is. Mm -hmm. That's so amazing that they trust you and they say, we're going to give this guy the role. And we also... I don't know what they're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, you also have to say yes before you even know what Every, the role... Everything's top secret these days. You, yeah. know? <laughs> you know, they won't tell you anything. Yeah. You know? So what is going through your mind when you're saying, okay, I'm saying yes, but I don't know what it is. Like, I'm just what saying, am I I'm saying myself J.J. Abrams, into? yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's going through my mind. I'm sure, of course. Yeah. yeah. So depending on who's asking, That's you may right. say yes before you know what they're asking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's very interesting. And then uh, you've worked, what is the, the Kevin, um, Kevin Shepard? Uh, the, is, is, that's another project that you're working with? That's him? the character I played in Big Fat Liar 2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is the Big comedy. Big Fat Liar 2, the one where you, it's top secret too. You well, everything's top it. secret these days <laughs> with these things. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, that's coming out, I think, in 2017, directed by Ron Oliver, you know, with uh, uh, Ricky Garcia, who's the young kid in the film. Uh, it's a comedy, over the top comedy, very different than Hello Destroyer. So for me, it's nice, to, it's refreshing to play something different after such a, you know, a, a dramatic role. So mm -hmm. a lot of fun. So you can't tell us about uh, anything about that too. There's a lot of lying going on it. I can tell you that. Okay. A lot <laughs> of lying. <laughs> Anybody fat? Are you fat in the movie? I don't think so. <laughs> but, yeah, maybe too many trips to the craft service table. Maybe. But <laughs> I see. I see. So when you have done uh, so much, you have so much to your credit. Is there something out there that still excites you, and you say, "Oh, I wish I could do this"? Absolutely. I mean, I just. I, I, I love acting, you know, and, a, and an opportunity to play different characters always entices me, you know. I, I think it's, uh, I've been very fortunate to play lots of different roles in my life, you know. On Stargate, I was a Scottish doctor, you know, with a heart of gold, and then, you know, something like Hell to Low Destroyer, dark, and as you saw in 24, another dark character, and, and then a comedy. So I think for me, it's the variety is the spice of life, and I, I, I really enjoy the opportunity to play different characters. And as you age, you know, you go into different categories, you know. So, uh, you know, now you're playing more dads than I wasn't doing that, you know, 10 years ago. And, and that, that's happening more often, and, you know, and you get into, you know, more like kind of seasoned detectives rather than the young rookie cops, you know. <laughs> so those, those are opportunities that come, come around. And uh, it's always exciting for me. I'm still very excited by the business, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is so amazing. And what about the uh, female love interests? that they may give you. <laughs> <laughs> they don't give me too many anymore. You know? <laughs>
<laughs> you know that. Yeah, I mean, hey, you know that, that's that's also fun. You have you know, you, you get that opportunity to play opposite somebody that's a fine actress. And we have so many great actresses in Vancouver, and a lot of them around my age category play their their husband at some point in time. Usually, I see them at auditions. We all laugh, you know. And <laughs> it's such a great community like that, and the, the talent pool here is just. It's amazing, you know. We have so many great shows shooting here and being produced by you know a lot of people in town that that are working really hard. And I, I think that when you know a lot of shows come in from the states or New York or, or you know, Los Angeles or New York, sorry, uh, they come here. I think they're quite impressed by our talent pool. And I, I think the actors here ha have a huge wealth of experience, you know. And and the crews here, of course, do as well. So I think Vancouver's got a lot going on for it. Yes, my people will take a short break, stay in Vancouver. It's a beautiful town to be in. <laughs> you and I talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uwachu.com to be a guest on the show. <laughs> My people, we're back. This is our last segment with the very multi-talented Paul McGillian. You have won so many awards. Which one is your favorite? So many what? Awards. 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 Um, I said so many hours. Uh, <laughs> so many awards. Um, I, you know, I'm really not a, a, a big awards guy, so to speak. Uh, I'm, I'm happy for the people that get them. You know, I was really happy for Kevin when he won the Emerging Director Award at uh, at the VIF uh, just recently. Um, you know, I've won a few Leos. That's always a pleasure to get recognized like that in your community because we're in our community here. I, I, I think, you know, just a chance to go, it's more the going out in the, the, the evening of is more exciting for me, to be honest with you. The you party. Know. The party, just seeing all your peers, and everyone's dressed up, and I think, you know, get a chance to bring my wife to these events sometimes, and it's a lot of fun. I think that's more what it is to me. It's more the sense of community than winning something. I think it's just being involved, and you get a sense of what's going on in our community, mm -hmm. and I think it's really great. Very nice. So, when you're here, you're at the master level. What would you teach the younger ones? Like these young people, so many people, they dream of becoming an actor and having such a great career. What would you tell to a young dreamer who dreams of eventually becoming like you? Well, that, that's great. I, <laughs> you know, I, I always say to young actors, and thank you for that, I think as an actor you're always learning and always progressing, and I, I hopefully that's, you don't, don't become stagnant. And That's what I always try to, you can learn all the time from everybody. Um, I always say, you know, do as much as you can. You know, do community theater, do any independent project you can. Just get out there and work. And I also uh, equate it to being like an athlete. You know, you have to practice every single day. You can't wait for the phone to ring. Create your own projects, you know, work with your friends, do videos. Nowadays with technology, you can shoot your own films, you know. Just get out there and act as much as possible so when you do get called, you're sharp and you're on your game. I think that's really important. And don't wait for the phone to ring. And, and do as many great scenes you can from plays, you know. I started out in theater and I still have an opportunity to do it once in a while, not as much as I'd like, but um, if you can do that, that's great. I mean, just act as much as you can. Mm -hmm. and, and also, it's a very difficult business, you know, so you have to have a passion for it. If you can do anything else really, really well and you're happy doing it, you might want to do that too, mm -hmm. you know, because it's a difficult road and it's based on rejection. But if you can take that and you have a thick skin and you don't take things personally and you can just move forward straight ahead, I think it's a great business for you then. Mm -hmm. That's a very nice point. Don't take things personally Can't because take anything personally. you're going into auditions and they're rejecting you and you go home. What are you thinking? More yeah. often than not, you know, they say if you get one or two out of 20 auditions, you know, you're doing well. Now, most people, you know, in a society, if they have, you know, 20 job interviews and they get one or two, I mean, I think they'd be devastated, you know. <laughs> I think it's, you, you got to go, I always say, I, I go in there, I give them a little piece of poly and I walk away. You know, that's all you can do. You know, you just give them a little piece of yourself and then move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. And what is, what is your mentality when you're going to audition? What would you advise to people? Because people get so nervous when they go for auditions. Right. What is your advice to a young actor? He's starting out, he, may, he has the passion, but he doesn't have the experience, but sure. he's going into an audition. What are you telling him? Yeah, well just be prepared. I think, you know, especially, you know, if you can, have your, be off book, memorize your lines. Go in there where you, where you can free yourself a little bit and just connect with the reader and just take them in and just respond. I think acting is a lot of listening and taking things in and use the energy, the nervous energy. Sometimes nervous energy is interesting to watch, you know, so don't be afraid of it. Just go in there and do your best 
And it, like I said, just give them a little piece of yourself, you know? Let your personality shine through. Uh -huh, Every uh -huh. role is an extension of yourself to a certain degree. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So opinion. allow yourself to get into the role. Don't be too stressed about, am I going to get this job or yeah. am I not going to get this job? Oh. <laughs> no, it, you might not get it because, you know, the, 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 the little girl that's playing your, your daughter, it has brown eyes and you have blue eyes. It's as simple as that, you know? And so you can't take it personally. You know, if you're the right fit, they're going to hire you. And if you're not, that's okay. Yeah. You know, it's not a competition. Acting's in essence. Very nice. That's a beautiful way to end. Okay, what is your last word that we can tell people? Because we have two seconds before the end. All I have to say, it's been a pleasure, my people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my people. It's been such a pleasure. And acting is an essence, like he just said. All right, my people, be you. <laughs> <laughs>